we are here to bring a new type of news show. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Bring news just for you. It's Tuesday, October 22nd here in Seoul. I'm Song Yujin, and this is News Generation. Today, we're joined by Kwon Ji-hyun. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. And Cheska Nye Hong. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Happy Tuesday, and welcome back. Yes. <laughs> now, both here to speak on behalf of those in their 20s and 30s. Now, we're going to begin our show today with our keyword news. Today's keyword is age. Following the recent death of former UK boy band One Direction member Liam Payne, there has been a growing discussion in the United Kingdom about the potential dangers of teenagers entering the music industry at a young age. According to The Guardian, Payne, who died at the age of 31, reportedly struggled with alcohol abuse and mental health issues after achieving sudden fame at just 16 years old following his appearance on the edition program X Factor. In his hotel in Argentina, where he stayed before his deadly fall from a balcony, authorities found clonazepam, a drug commonly prescribed for panic disorders and epilepsy. Some industry insiders, including renowned songwriter Guy Chambers, have called for stricter age restrictions, suggesting that minors or those under 18 should not be allowed to work in the music industry. Their concern is that young artists often lack the proper care and protection needed to navigate the pressures of fame. Well, I think that this topic really resonates closely in Korea as well, because we're seeing a lot of K-pop group members mm -hmm. who are still young, who are teenagers, so I kind of want to ask our panelists, what do you think about minors entering or working in the entertainment or specifically the music industry? You know, this is such a tricky conundrum and mm -hmm. I think a very important question, especially because South Korea has built its K-wave with a lot of K-pop stars right. who started from very young, right? And I'm all for young talent starting early and pursuing what they love. But I think here's the thing, when you are exposed to a career or an industry where you're completely exposed without any protection mm -hmm. to unfiltered criticism, prejudice and very negative comments from a lot of you know all the people I think you really need to build mm -hmm. this very strong ground and have this mental fortitude right but here's the problem you can't possibly build that without experience without experience time and maturity as we can all speak mm -hmm. from our own experiences right so there's the tricky conundrum and the other thing is especially young people that are going through they're very susceptible mm -hmm. to a lot of the comments from adults even if it's not targeted to them so they're exposed to an adult industry mm -hmm. without really knowing what is right or wrong so here's the only thing that I can say if I had a child mm -hmm. I would probably never allow him or her to be in the industry and would treat it like an actual job so you can only get the part-time jobs when you're of a legal age, right? Mm. I would provide her with all the trainings and maybe theater work and whatnot. But getting a job in the industry, I would make sure that she or he is of a legal age and ready mm. to make own decisions. Mm, right. And I think especially these days, a minors who are in the industry are particularly affected more by these hate so comments much, yes. and um, th those because because of the advent and development of social media, Which right? We'll talk about today. Mm, yeah. Right. Mm. So stay tuned for our discussion today. Now, what are your thoughts on this uh, question? Well, banning minors from entering the industry, the showbiz, the showbiz industry, is quite a reasonable suggestion, mm -hmm. as young artists often face immense pressure mm -hmm. and lack of emotional strength to cope with that fame. And protecting their mental health should be a priority, though some argue that talent shouldn't be limited mm -hmm. by age. Well, a balance must be found between nurturing young talent and safeguarding their well-being. I personally don't think it's wise for children to start in an in entertainment industry too early. For example, an actress who began her career as a child actor mm -hmm. at the age of five is now at the top of her field mm -hmm. currently, yet she speaks about the emotional scars she's endured and ex she experienced back in the days, even in her early 20s, feels ready to retire now. Mm, definitely. So more protection and care needed for these uh, young artists. Now, we can't really ban these artists from entering the industry as of now. So maybe the best solution that we can suggest uh, as of now is probably giving them or coming up with more protection and uh, care. Oh, for example, counseling sessions. Counseling sessions. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chion and we talked about maybe a little bit more education. Mm -hmm. right. Education. Regulation, mm -hmm. like laws to actually punish people mm -hmm. who are doing malicious things on social media or to other people. Setting the boundaries sure. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So hope we can see these changes coming up soon. And that was our keyword news for this Tuesday. So we're now going to move on to our main discussion of the day. It's Tuesday, which means it's time to explore the latest trends on Korea's cultural front. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the screen to find out more. 
Social media has become an inseparable part of many young people's lives. It has become natural to share photos and videos of our everyday lives on our accounts. But recently, more and more young people are stepping away from social media. So as we're going to talk about social media usage among our generation today, I want to first start by asking our panelists, are you active on social media? If you are, how regularly you use it? And do you also think that our generation is glued to these services? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I am quite active on Instagram, YouTube, Neighbor TV and TikTok. I <laughs> regularly post updates um, about my work and my personal life. And, I do lots of reels and shorts as well. It's kind of it's a little embar embarrassing to say. <laughs> Why? Yes, I do news, I news anchor as well as a content creator and an influencer on YouTube. You can see it right now. Yes, oh, very, wow. very, it's quite embarrassing oh. indeed looking at my, uh, my channel all together. <laughs> But thankfully, many of my videos have been met with a great response. Right, and you're to doing be so great. <laughs> yes, I am so shy right now. But to be honest, I actually spend more time looking at other people's social mm. media accounts than my own one. I think I spend around three to four hours a day on mm -hmm. it, you know, uh, more than that. In fact. <laughs> well, now, it's not just me. The younger generation uses social media for uh, far more than mm -hmm. previous ones. Right. Let's look at uh, the, take a look at the data on social media usage by generation generation in 2023. Mm -hmm. As you can see here, millennials are leading the pack mm -hmm. at with a remarkable 90.6% wow. of them using social media. Almost all of them are using mm -hmm. it. Um, not far behind are Zen Z, Zen Z at 87.2%, followed by Zen X at 65.3%. And finally, we have the baby boomers mm -hmm. with only 24.2% oh. engaging on platforms like Instagram or Facebook. And this data collected from a survey of nearly 10,000 people really highlights how social media mm -hmm. has become an integral part of our daily life, especially for the younger generation. Right. Well, in fact, my dad, who is in the category of baby boomers, <laughs> he started with Facebook, but now he is into Instagram oh. right now. So this trend is catching on. That is right. But even though we don't follow each other, he is into <laughs> Instagram and YouTube as well. Very yes. understandable. <laughs> you do understand that, yes. Oh, right. So we're seeing an increase in uh, the users of social media among all generations, but particularly, once again, our generation are the primary users of these services. I think I'm also part of that pack, 87.2%, yes. because yep. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, um, media, uh, social media services like that. So once again, the stats that Chuyun mentioned show us how social media has become such a big part of a routine. Mm -hmm. And I also want to ask you, Cheska, mm -hmm. are you also active on social media? So I think I represent a pretty good balance. Um, I do fall into the 80% category, but I'm like on the other end of those 80%. Mm. I do have social media, um, but I don't do TikTok and my YouTube algorithm is completely disabled. Oh. So when I go in, there's a flat black screen, no suggestions whatsoever. So you, you can kind of distance yourself. Yes, like I'm, I'm one of those people that are doing very active um, regulations and taking the time mm -hmm. to actually make sure that I stay away from social media, not because I'm a good person, I really just don't trust myself. Yeah, as we'll talk about, as we'll talk about today, social media can be very addictive. Right, right. And I do see myself being hooked on it very easily. So I think practicing that kind of self-discipline is sometimes really important. Mm -hmm. Right. But for sure, in South Korea, Instagram is very popular. And then we call it caffeine, right? Cacao. Uh -huh. Facebook, Facebook, Instagram. Instagram, yes. Yeah. And then, so surprisingly, TikTok is not very popular among Korean MZs. But we do have something called the neighbor band, which we kind of mm -hmm. talked about for much older generations. Right, right. But it's more of like a group thing where they share information or like they trade secondhand goods, mm -hmm. those kind of stuff, yeah. Mm, so you mentioned all these social media platforms, mm -hmm. which all, which once again show how these services has become a big part of our lives. But when it starts taking up too much, this can actually lead to social media addiction that you mentioned, Cheska. Yes. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of young people are choosing to cut back nowadays as mm -hmm. they notice the negative impacts uh, of relying too much on these services. So I want to ask you, what are some of the common drops the social media users have experienced when they are too attached to these platforms. Mm -hmm. And Yujin, as you mentioned, I think this is exactly the reason why in our NewsGen studio we've covered topics like addiction. And digital detox. Digital detox and people going on the so-called monk mode, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's been known over and over through research that social media or too much time on social media can cause physical, right. mental and social problems. 
And this is not just confined to our generation, but you know, it, there is an addictive and hooking mechanism that social media implements to make sure that people actually stay on it right. and can't get out, which leads us to anxiety and a lot of depression. So here's a research, so let's take a look at the screen to see an actual research that was conducted by colleagues from three different universities in America. And they actually did a research on association between media use, social media usage and depression. And surprisingly, for a survey of 1,000 people under 30 years old, as you can see, they found that one third of people actually expressed depression. Oh. And this is not just confined to depression. There are other, other forms of mental you know, uh, problems, such as you know, de deformed body image, um, anxiety and having this problem with actually forming a human relationship. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, there's a book uh, called Anxious Generation by Jonathan Haidt, and multiple research have stated that our generation, our current generation, is experiencing all-time high mm -hmm. of teenage depression ever in history. Mm, right, so too much, too much usage of social media can have an impact both physically, psychologically, uh, and also socially as well. Now, this is once again recognizing the severity of the problem Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why our generation is starting to go on a social media detox. Mm -hmm. So now to the methods, Chiyun, how is our generation actually trying to unplug from these services? Well, regularly checking your social media accounts, it's seen as a form of addiction. So many experts say it's healthier to gradually reduce usage rather than quitting cold mm -hmm. turkey. So there's even a popular quitting social media challenge, mm -hmm. trending among some in the end generation. So locking apps have become quite popular too. These apps block access to social media for a set a period of time, helping users to cut down on their screen time. Mm. So studies show excessive social media uses linked to mental health issues like anxiety and depression, as Jessica has mentioned, and especially for younger generations who often spend several times, several hours mm. a day scrolling. scrolling online. And personally, I try to limit my social media use by intentionally place my mobile far away from mm -hmm. me, charging it, so I'm not tempted to check it too often. Mm -hmm. And constant comparison to others' best moments, they always go to those Very fancy true. restaurants and get those fancy gifts they uh -huh. have. Mm -hmm. This can lead to low self-esteem. Right, right. And late night scrolling is known to disrupt sleep patterns, further impacting overall well-being of your life. And some locking apps even work on a deposit system. Oh. They give you money where you get your money back if you stick to your That's social nice. media limits. Mm -hmm. And now they offer rewards mm -hmm. for staying within your set daily limits, oh. encouraging healthy habits over time using your mobile. Mm -hmm. Because really, you know, who wouldn't stick to the rules yes. when there's cash <laughs> on the table? Right, that could be the most effective way to distance yourself from that social is, media. That is an incentive and could be addiction Right, too. so if you want to try a social media detox, you can check out your app store and download one of these apps and try these methods. Mm -hmm. Now to find out whether uh, using too much of a social media is also a concern in other parts of the world, we also asked our viewers how often they log into social media and what they usually do when they're online. And let's check out what three of them said. Eyes on K-pop says, my most used SNS app is Instagram because I enjoy looking at posts uploaded by my friends and favorite K-pop artists and watching their Instagram lives. I spend on average eight hours per day online. Giselle 264 says, I use Instagram to keep up with friends and scroll through my feed for entertainment. It's something I check daily. Gventura503 says, I think I'm spending equal time on all my social media platforms to stay connected. Instagram, Facebook, and X are like my gateway to the world. YouTube is my best entertainment and information platform for my music videos and Houston. Yay! Well, thank you, Gventura503. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> right, so going back to our discussion on social media, as we touched on earlier in our discussion, one of the main reasons our generation is trying to cut back on these platforms is the growing concern about addiction. Now, to learn more about what social media addiction really is and how we can address it, we're going to invite an expert to our talks after a short break. NewsGen wants to hear from you. Go to YouTube and search our channel Arirang News. Click Community and leave a comment down below. Make a new type of news with us. 
Right, so today we're joined by Dr. Kim Jong-jin, Medical Director of the Alcohol, Drugs and Addiction and Patient Program at Harvard Medical School's McLean Hospital. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Kim. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you. So our first question for you is, earlier our panelists and I discussed how young people are among the most active users of social media, often spending more time on these platforms than other age groups. Now naturally, this once again raises the risk of social media addiction within our generation. So how is social media addiction typically defined and what are some common signs or symptoms to look out for? Sure. So social media addiction is not yet formally recognized as a disorder in the medical community, but it is beginning to gain a lot of attention uh, as a form of behavioral addiction. So addiction, if you would define it, it's typically referred to substance use, but the term has broadened since the 90s to include any behaviors that are potentially rewarding. And behavioral addiction is addiction to a particular behavior or feelings that are experienced when you're engaged in that behavior. For example, the most commonly recognized ones are things like gambling, shopping, and gaming addiction. Similarly, social media addiction can be viewed as a subtype of behavioral addiction. And as far as the symptoms go, uh, the core of addiction really is the loss of control, or more, more specifically what is known as of the three C's, one, uh, compulsive use, and two, continued use despite adverse consequences for one's wellness and functioning, and third, cravings. So, for example, if you get antsy when you're not on the social media, eagerly anticipating logging back in and spending a great deal of time doing it so much so that you end up stunting your social, academic, or professional performance or outcome, um, that might be considered an addiction. Mm, then, Dr. Kim, uh, why is social media addiction considered dangerous and how can it impact both our mental and physical health? Sure, so the long-term harmful consequences of social media addiction are not yet clear. We haven't had social media for quite a long period of time, so the long-term consequences are still need to be fleshed out. Um, but intuitively, as humans, we are social beings. So if the purpose of social media is to enrich our social connectedness, one would think that social media should make all of us happier and more fulfilled. But is that the case? Uh, we know that during the pandemic, there was really no alternative way to stay connected with your community other than through digital means like the social media. But ever since then, the depression, anxiety, and mental health problems have really skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned earlier in the show, uh, some preliminary studies have already suggested that excessive social media use is associated with higher rates of depression, anxiety, lower self-esteem, concentration deficits. Um, and there are some papers actually showing, like there was one that was published at Penn that found out that reducing the time spent on social media and limiting it to 10 minutes a day actually led to a marked reduction in depression and anxiety symptoms. So, Dr. Kim, I mean, obviously, as you mentioned very eloquently, social media does have its pros, but heavy reliance on it can cause many, many problems. What are some of the practical steps that we can actually take to reduce this heavy reliance on social media for our generation? Right. So there are many benefits, uh, as you have to point out, to digital technology like uh, the social media. But the balanced approach is the best. And I think this starts with an honest appraisal of how much time I am spending doing this, and if doing it, doing this and spending time on social media is consistent with my social, academic, or professional goals, mm -hmm. if they are not consistently congruent, uh, it might be time to make some adjustments. Um, mm -hmm. And typically, putting cold turkey for any addiction can be hard. You know, you can feel a lot of dysphoria. Um, it's, it's not very pleasant. So strategies like setting some time limits and gradually reducing the time that you spend on it, maybe disabling notification features to minimize distractions, maybe deleting some particularly addictive apps, um, and not using the app before going to bed might be some ways to kind of cut back on the use. And some other practical uh, skills would be to replace the rewards from social media with rewards that are more aligned with your goals. For mm -hmm. example, if you like spending time outside or playing sports, um, doing so and getting the pleasure that way to replace the pleasure excessively derived from dependence on social media can be a way to um, make your life a little bit richer. And 
At a deeper level, addiction rarely occurs in a vacuum. So we typically turn to addictive rewards to form like some sort of, uh, to fulfill some sort of unfilled inner need. So long term, it may be useful to examine inward uh, what are those things I that I need right. from social media? Am I turning to social media to compare myself with others? Am I mm. contented with who I am? What kind of authentic relationship do I find meaningful? And is social media consistent with that? These are some important uh, deep questions to think mm. about. Mm. We'll make sure to keep that in mind. All right, Dr. Kim, always thank you so much and hope you have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right, so kind of balance our discussion today. While social media has its downsides, too much of it can, of course, lead to addiction, which we talked about. It's also a great way to stay connected no matter where we are in the world, with our families, with our friends and colleagues. So as we wrap up our discussion today, what are your tips or your suggestions to use social media in the healthiest way? Well, social media platform can be a great tool for staying connected and yes. discovering new ideas, quite informative mm -hmm. sometimes. Often space for creativity mm -hmm. and connection however excessive use has been linked to issues such as anxiety poor sleep and mm -hmm. reduced productivity of your work or your study you've got to go to bed without your mobile now so <laughs> studies show that too much screen time can also harm your relationships you know it's even said that simply placing your phone placing your mobile on the table when meeting someone or spending time with your family mm -hmm. or significant other can have a negative if effect that's right. why it's quite crucial to set boundaries like limiting your screen time mm -hmm. each day so use social media mindfully ensuring it adds value to your life rather than taking control of your life mm -hmm. and avoid falling into the trap of endless scrolling and comparing yourself to others as dr kim just mentioned mm -hmm. and remember Balance is key. Mm -hmm. Social media should work for you, mm -hmm. not the other way around. Mm, right. Mm -hmm. So we initially started these services to stay connected with others, yeah. but it's really important to make sure that we're not dis disconnected yes. by using these services too excessively. Yeah. What, are, what do you think? I completely agree with Shihan. Um, I think sometimes I'm in awe and feel really blessed that we actually live in a generation mm -hmm. where you can get lectures, education, empowerment, and entertainment from all around the world for free. I mean, if you just think about it it's, it's remarkable we mm -hmm. can watch lectures about Nobel Prize winners just at the tip of our <laughs> fingertips but as Chuya mentioned and Dr Kim mentioned mm -hmm. balance is extremely important and we live in a generation where when you don't practice self-discipline it can really get out of hand and I do not believe that complete freedom is being reckless mm. actually complete complete freedom comes with absolute control and just to paraphrase a very famous book dopamine nation that really talks about addition in detail by Dr Anna Lim Key she says we're in constant race mm -hmm. between those who are doing everything they can to monetize and grab our time and attention and us who have to do everything we can to make sure we secure and protect our boundaries because if we don't it's so easy to get mm -hmm. lost in the middle of all of this yeah. right definitely so hope our discussion today helps our viewers a helps our viewers to have a more balanced and healthy use of social media and that's all from news gen today but we'll be back tomorrow at 10 30 a.m korea time special thanks today to kwon Jiyan. have a lovely day thank you you too and cheska night huh which is always mine thank you thank you and thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you tomorrow we are news generation, news generation.